get ready. Hi, everyone. My name is Molly Allen. I'm the um, gallery director here at SMU. So the structure for tonight is a little bit different than the past visiting artists because we have two BFA shows. So, so far we have just looked at one. We're going to have snacks, refreshments over here, eat all of that up. Um, we're going to listen to both of these artists' talks by Lauren Murphy and Courtney Rock. And, and then we're going to walk all together over to go see Courtney's show, I Shoot People. Um, if you haven't had the pleasure of viewing her work in person, then it's really a must for you to go over there because it really, it really changes things. Um, so before I introduce our awesome BFAs, I want to take a minute and talk about um, the events that are happening in the galleries this semester. So BFA season is officially here. We have four more shows this semester. Um, and the structure is going to look just like tonight for most of them. Um, so we're going to have two shows run simultaneously. And the next exhibition we have is Victor Herrera, which will be in the Tahoe Gallery. Snap to Victor. Um, this will be Wednesday the 10th at 5 p.m. And then Julia Hart over in the Garage Door Gallery. Snap. So they are next week. Um, and then the week after that, with the reception on Wednesday, November 17th at 5 p.m., we have Nikki Sardelli in the Garage Door Gallery and Dave Spivak in the Tahoe Gallery. So stick around for that. We're just starting our BFA season. Um, with that, I'm going to take it away and give Lauren a little intro, and then she's going to give you her artist talk. Lauren Murphy is originally from Southern California, and after receiving her associate's degree in liberal arts and humanities, she made the move to Nevada to pursue art full time. It's been my pleasure watching Lauren make this body of work and see some paintings to new levels. This show, The Fruit We Bear, shares a glimpse into the beauty of fruit while also showing how preposterous life is without understanding what came first. So join me in welcoming Lauren Murphy. <laughs> This fruit kind of um, ties into this story as 
different reasons, whether it was religion, social class, or just to show technical skills. But I wanted to show what it meant to me and give that kind of um, charm, even though I've said it like three times. I want to give my paintings a certain charm that I didn't feel was rendered in the past. So my very first painting that I'm going to start with that is part of this body of work is this one um, is a woman with watermelon atop her head and an apple atop that. Um, this one is actually the most interesting or different than the rest because I actually created this painting with acrylic paint, which the rest of my paintings are made from. But I also added in silica, which texturized the paint a lot differently than just typical acrylic paint would be. And it actually made it like a paste. And my thought for this was trying to create texture. And the reason why you don't see any more paintings like this in the rest of my show is that I really felt that adding the silica made the paint textured itself and it wasn't allowing me to texturize the painting. So I decided against this, but I thought that the composition was what I wanted. And I also want to speak to the image itself. Um, you might be wondering why there is some watermelon on top of it and what does it mean. Um, and to me, when I think of the fruit we bear, I think about it in a sense of I had to bear whatever my past was in order to feel these feelings I have for this fruit and to really feel that they have a purpose in my life to make me feel healthy or whatever that feeling is. And I wanted to question that and um, I'm almost flipping it on itself and asking this fruit to bear whatever I do to it. So I'm asking them to endure um, sitting atop this woman's head. And you'll see that in the following painting as well. So I also have um, this painting here. This is a water glass with a strawberry. And I added this here because I wanted to speak to how um, in the last painting I told you that the silica made the paint itself textured and I was more interested in how I can layer the paint and make it textured. Um, so this painting in particular showed a few elements of how that was being represented through the paint, or I mean through the painter in that paint. Um, I'll also speak a little bit to the cutout aspect of this in a little bit. 
really learn how it can be so precise um, from taking from the digital. Um, as I'll show in some of my further slides, you can see where I'm starting to render things a little more loose and these are more tight, but that's because I'm taking reference from the digital painting. I also want to speak a little bit to the actual composition of this photo. I definitely have learned that this photo or image was influenced by our new technology wave and how we all have smartphones in our back pocket and a front-facing camera that we have Snapchat and Instagram and all of those things, those social platforms are influencing this photo in this, what I like to call this new modern portrait. Um, because I know when I go on Snapchat, I take my phone out of my pocket, I see I have a Snapchat, and I click the response and I just do whatever, like wherever my phone is, I just go click and then put it away. And so this is just a really fast and interesting and new perspective that I find um, just kind of awkward and interesting and that's what's being portrayed here. Um, this one is, again, taken from a photo that was brought into digital that then was processed into this painting. Um, the thing that I am really interested in in this particular painting or picture is that you can really tell how happy this man was making me. And it made me happy to paint this because I always knew that happiness that this, these groups have brought me, but it was kind of cool to find an old picture of myself and really see that. Um, the last artist I'm going to speak to is Dan Ferguson, and as I've spoken to a little bit before, um, on the right-hand side, you can see where that front-facing camera is really um, being influenced there, and just this awkward selfie-esque portrait. And I also want to speak to how this artist, I didn't put the greatest picture up, but there is an image in my head that this artist created where he's really playing with what is finished and what isn't finished. And there's this one painting that I saw where he's painting a figure and he has the jacket of this figure completely detailed out, but yet renders the arms and the legs with just a sketch and not fully um, painted in. And as you'll see in my few, in my next few slides, is that I'm kind of trying to um, develop that in a way where I'm thinking about what actually needs to be completely rendered for you to understand what's going on. I definitely don't believe that this artist needed to render the arms in a peach colored tone for me to understand what was happening in the painting. So next I have this painting. Um, I actually took a video of myself swishing an orange and took four screenshots of different moments of my foot swishing the orange. And again, I'm questioning that, that idea of how much do I have to render this foot for you to understand that it's a foot swishing an orange. And another part of this piece was that I was also being really influenced by Andy Warhol and his Campbell Soup um, print. And if you look at those, oh, if you look at those prints, you'll see that every single Campbell Soup is the same 
cupcakes um, may feel the most different from the rest of my work. This was created from a collage, and when I was thinking about this collage and taking images for this collage, I was really thinking about how I can get hopefully at least half of my photos to have some kind of fruit in them while being in some kind of nature field. And then the rest of my photos are coming from nature as well. So I really recognized when I was creating this collage how difficult I made it on myself because I was trying to put these nature things on top of other nature things. For example, I had this lemon in water trying to sit next to other landscapes, which I found pretty difficult. But as soon as I figured out one thing matched with another, it really started to pull itself together. And once I created this collage on the left side, um, then I just felt like it needed more. So I created this painting. And once I created this painting, I, I found myself with a lot of white space. And I didn't know what to do with that. So someone challenged me to cut out the white space. And I decided to do that. And I felt that it became very dynamic. And um, again, in this collage, I'm thinking about them as gestural paintings and not being super exact and really trying to understand how the previous artists that I showed are influencing my work. Um, but once I made this painting, I realized that it was a lot different than the rest of my work. And I realized that if I wanted it in my show, I needed it to talk with something else in my show. So as I showed at the beginning, um, that water glass with the strawberry, I had painted that one before this collage, and I decided that I needed that painting to speak to this painting. So I cut out the water glass and left out a white space so that it can render the same kind of feeling that this painting is trying to give off. And lastly, I have this little series of what I'll call the cowboy man. <laughs> Um, again, this is really just a testimony to growing away from, although I was happy to start with these photo references and then going to digital and making these exact paintings from that, um, this was me knowing how to paint from a blank reference and knowing that I didn't need to make it exact. I wasn't focused on making the nose super detailed because at some point it didn't need that. You can still see what it's supposed to be without me detailing the nose. And that's me speaking to um, the artist Dan Ferguson of just being more gestural with my work. And here is a little close up of where you can see how my past my brushstrokes are and where painting is being laid first and where it's coming out from behind. And yeah, I mean this um, this whole show was an experiment and it led me from one painting to the next. And although it might not feel completely cohesive, I believe that with the fruit being the center of attention and the painting, the painting influencing the next. I really do think that they all speak to each other. And that is basically all I have for now, but it is not <laughs> all forever. <laughs>